First thing that stands out is this build plate and it's a flexible sheet. So it's like a thin metal sheet that flexes. And I really like these. And this coating here, I think it's called PE. And I prefer this kind of build plate over the normal mats or even the glass beds. I feel like these are much easier and better overall. And there is a magnetic that this magnetizes to. So I'm going to leave this off for now. And yeah, guys, as you can see, pretty much the printer is all assembled. All we got to do is connect this gantry here to the base. And we're going to have these four bolts that go through the bottom into the channel. Let's go ahead and get those out. And they do give you an extra one. So I guess we can go ahead and see what's in this manual. So we get a little thank you from Creality, our warranty card, and then the quick start guide, which is a really nice one. We have all the parts that are included with this printer. And the installation is only a couple pages and very simple. So just connecting the gantry, then the spool holder, and then connecting the wiring. And by the way, here's all our parameters to the printer. So yeah, this should be very simple, guys. And if you're just getting started with 3D printing, this is going to be great for you because it's quite simple compared to what it used to be like. Let's go ahead and start putting this thing together. So yeah, well, simple as grabbing the gantry. We're just going to set it over these sides here and you guys can kind of see it's machined out there and it's literally going to sit right in that spot. Now, when you put this down, make sure that your cables here are not tangled and they're happy. So you might have to twist this around to untangle it. So yeah, I think mine's good right there. But yeah, simple as that. We're going to grab the bolt we need. There's no really easy way of doing this, but we can kind of lift one corner and then put the bolt through there. Yeah, well, however you got to do this, you can you know put it on its side or maybe off the edge of the table or whatever is easier for you just get these bolts in there and we're going to use the largest allen wrench to run them down now we're not going to tighten this i'm just going to get him close and we're going to do the other side exactly the same way run them down but we're not going to tighten these either and the reason for that is quite simple if we go to the back you guys can see we have a one elite screw here which connects to our x-axis and we're going to want to bring that all the way down and the reason for that is because we want the space between these rollers here to be as close as possible on the bottom since we are spending most of our time down there we want to get that part as close as possible so just go down as much as it goes so now we're going to go back underneath and completely tighten these up on both sides all right and that's pretty much it so another thing you might want to check is if your printer is sitting level on each corner to see if it's moving around. So as you guys can see, mine is nice and solid. If you guys can see on the side, there's four bolts. If yours is wobbling a bit, go ahead and loosen them on each side and then let it sit flat and then tighten them back up. So I'm going to go ahead and just check mine, make sure they're tight. They're a little loose, but not too bad, which is a good idea to go back and kind of check them anyways, as they do loosen up after they get assembled. And also underneath the printer, we got four bolts here. You can go ahead and check those, kind of snug them up. All right, and that feels nice and solid right there. So let's go ahead and do the screen next. And we can see here, there's a wire that comes out from the bottom and that's gonna plug into our main screen. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take the bracket off that it connects to. And we're gonna be installing the bracket right here on the channel. And there's some T-nuts that are pre-installed. We're gonna grab the correct wrench and we're gonna loosen them all because they're all tight. So there's a bolt on one end and a T-nut on the other. So now that they're all loose, what we're going to do is we're going to line these T-nuts up to the channel. So these two here are going to go on the bottom channel and this one here on the top. Yeah, just get them to kind of jump in there. And then, you know, you can install this screen more forward or more back, whatever you want. I guess I'm going to try to flush it here with this fascia. So about right there. And so with these, you just want to unscrew the bolt and then screw it in. And the T-nut should turn into the channel and lock in. It's a little hard to show you guys, but it's not very complicated. If you're having trouble, just unscrew the bolt and then screw it back in. And try to make sure that the T-nut's lining up center on the groove there in the channel. But yeah, I'm just going to unscrew it and then screw it in. And it grabbed. And we got one more here. A little bit harder to get to. And just like that, our bracket for the screen is on. So since we're over here, let's go ahead and plug it in on the back. Just like that. And then we'll click it in. And now we have our screen installed. For the next part, we need to install the spool holder. And that goes on top. And if you guys look where our extruder is, that's where the filament goes in. So it has to come from the spool holder down into here. So the spool holder mounts closer to the lead screw here. And we're also working with T-nuts. So let's loosen the bolts. So spool holder going to the back. And I like to go as far as possible to the edge. But yeah, same thing here. We're just going to unscrew it, then screw them in. And the T-nut should turn and lock in. And same thing for this one. 
And there we go, our spool holder is installed. So the last thing left to do really is just to plug in our wires. So we have two larger plugs, which is an X motor and an E for the extruder. And they are labeled with these little yellow tags. And then our smaller plug is our X axis in stop switch, which is over here. But let's go ahead and install the motor plugs. So the E will go on the extruder right here. And the X plugs underneath the motor, just like that. And then our X axis in stop switch plugs in under here, which is a little harder to see, but yeah, right under there. And that's pretty much done. And the last thing we got to plug in is our Z-axis motor. And this wire just comes out here from the bottom and we'll go ahead and plug it in just like that. So yeah, pretty simple. Now, the only thing that we can see that there's a little issue here is that this wire here just kind of falls down and that's not good. So we need to fasten it right here. So there's a little slot on the extruder that we can use a zip tie on. So we'll go through there and then around this wire and zip it up. That way it doesn't, you know, fall down onto our bed. And yeah, simple as that, guys. This part is finished. We can also go ahead and install this knob, which goes right here on top of the extruder. And it has a flat spot where it lines up. So it should just drop in. There we go. Very nice. So you guys can see, you can turn that. And also it's like a nice little visual there as the extruder runs. And as far as assembly goes, we are pretty much finished with that. But there are some important things that we need to do, and that's to check our rollers and belts. Make sure everything's running smooth and true. All right, so starting here with the bed, what we wanna do is check our rollers, and you guys can probably see, we got two rollers here, and those are stationary, and the two on this side are adjustable. And so what I like to do is kinda stick my hand in there and turn the rollers. So what you want is a really slight drag, and actually guys, my bed here is pretty much perfect. And so there you include this wrench here, that you can turn the adjustable eccentric nut to tighten and loosen the rollers. So I tightened my front one up just a little because it was super loose and the rear one is perfect. So the point here is you want the bed not to wobble around or have any play, but be as loose as possible on the rollers. That way when it rolls around, it's really smooth. So if you have a really nice smooth back and forth motion, then you should be good. Now another thing that can contribute to that is the belt. So you can see on the top there, there's a little look through where you can see how the belt is doing. And also we have an adjustable knob here to tighten and loosen it. So you want your belt to be looser than tighter, but definitely not too loose because if it's too loose, it'll have flop. And if your belt is not running true, you can try to loosen these bolts on the bottom here and adjust it. But for this, you'd probably have to shimmy it up and whatnot else because there's no actual adjustment. Now, as far as the back is concerned, we can't even see anything here, not even underneath. So in order to see this at all, you just have to take it apart. And there's a little pass through through here which releases the end stop switch. And even then, we can't really see how well the belt is going over that gear. But according to what I can see, it seems fine. The whole point here is that make sure your bed is really smooth. So I'm gonna put this back on. And we're probably going in a little bit in too much detail here, but yeah, adjusting is one of the main things you wanna do and spend your time on when you get your printer. So if we flip it around to the back, we can see our hot end assembly here, and these have rollers too. So it seems to be pretty smooth. Yeah, our belt is way too tight, but if we check the rollers, they're actually adjusted perfect because if we spin the tops, if you guys can maybe see that, they got the perfect tension on them. So you just want them to kind of do this little burnout. So if they're too tight, you won't be able to churn this easily. And if it's too loose, it'll wobble. So this actually is perfectly adjusted on mine. And the eccentric nut is under here on this wheel if you do need to loosen it or tighten it. So same concept, some slight drag on the wheels and it's gotta feel smooth. So mine is not smooth at all and that's because there's something going on with the belt. So it might be too tight. Yes, it's very tight. So we got an adjustment here on the side for the x-axis. Oh, they got that super tight on mine. Let's see. All right, so yeah, that definitely smoothed it out, but I can't see if the belt is running true on the pulley or not because it's all covered up on both sides completely, which is not great in my opinion because if I wanted to adjust this, I can't because I can't even see it. And I wish they'd make a little cutout at least so you can see, but they didn't on the both sides are completely sealed. And actually guys, on this side, there are a couple bolts that do remove the cover and maybe we should do that real quick to see. So there's one on top and one on the bottom and the whole thing just pops off and we can see the belt and sure enough it's actually running really true here right in the middle of the sprocket which is good to see now we can't see the other side at all and i don't really see how you can take that on or off so we're just going to go with the way it is 
and I think it should be good enough because it does feel pretty smooth overall. And be careful when you do tighten it with these knobs as you can't really feel how much tightness you have. So you kind of have to pull on the belt when you adjust that. All right, well, let's put this cover back on and we're good with the X axis. Now, there is one more thing that you could adjust and that's these wheels here. So on mine, they're a little bit on the tight side. But we can go ahead and loosen them up just a bit and the adjustable eccentric nuts is on the inside here. We'll start with this one. So we loosened it up just a tiny bit. You wanna keep these tighter than looser because the Z goes up and down really slow. So there's not too much movement going on. So it's okay if they're a bit tighter. Now what you don't want it to be is too loose where on this side you can bounce around, which we're not bouncing, it's nice and tight. Because we only have one Z-axis elite screw, this side is more vulnerable to movement. And so for this printer, it's better to be tighter than looser. Yeah, we are pretty loose and you guys can see our Z-axis moves really good. And I can just push it up and down. And this is usually a great indicator that everything's adjusted well and it's all aligned and nothing's binding. Now what I've noticed is that this lead screw here is completely dry. So if you want to put some oil on it or some grease, that'll probably be a good idea. Especially if you're having a hard time moving up and down like this. It does have something on it, but it feels like almost nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of grease on it since I have it. And if you don't have any kind of grease at all, you can just use regular oil. And if you don't have that, you can use cooking oil. It's still better than nothing. And if we run this up and down, our oil or grease will spread and you guys can see it runs really smooth so much more smoother now that I put some grease on it so yeah all these things matter and make your printer a lot more precise so yeah as simple as that guys we're pretty much done with all the assembly and adjusting and we can go ahead and put our build plate back on which just magnetizes so let's go ahead and clean up the table here and we can use this drawer from the printer to put our tools in here and the needle we can pull out of this tape and be careful it's very sharp and it can actually go in this side pocket that goes underneath the channel so it's only revealed when you pull it out completely so things that you're absolutely not going to use you can put in there so i can even stuff my zip ties in there probably but all our other tools we can all put them in the main drawer including our cutters they fit nicely in there and we'll just put it all in here and it's nice and organized 